Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. So it's been a while, but uh, I have a project that I'm working on. It's like a old and new computer. Uh, it's an X79 rig that I'm rebuilding and in it I had this card back in the day. It's a Sonar D1 from Asus. It actually goes all the way back to my Core Opteron machine with two CPUs. So I don't know exactly when I bought this, but it came out in 2008. I had that machine in 2006 and it broke some run, it broke in 2010, uh, about three and a half years in. And motherboard, motherboard went uh, bye bye on that one. So I bought an i7 in uh, 2010, the i7 920. And then I moved, actually moved this over to my i7 3930K. And in the end, I think I had a C on 1680V2 in it. And that machine with this card and I took that out of service in 2021 in February. But I suspect there was something wrong with the card back then. The front jack doesn't work. So that's the top one, second from the top. So the top one is line in and mic and it's also optical out that's why it's so big. The side, uh, this should be center subwoofer and this is rear. Uh, but you can configure them all for example you can say I have two channels of audio and I want eight channels out, so you can make them all steer outputs, uh, which is nice. So I suspect that this might have broken when I was using a card, but I actually used the rear as a front audio output, actually. Because that's perfectly doable, both in Windows and Linux, though in Windows you can't set it from Windows. You need to set the number of output channels in the Asus tool, or you won't get anything out of these uh, three ones here. Uh, the front audio jack not working isn't the only problem. Uh, the other three jacks here, they do work. It seems to be almost normal sound level. And uh, seems to have decent audio. That's not good. So this is a actually a fairly decent sound card for this time. So, but the, the audio color kind of crap, I figured. And uh, I did realize when I used uh, not uh, non-active speaker. So if I use active speaker, these three sounds fairly good. This one you can hear if you pull everything up in lines or windows to the max, the master volume and so on and really crank the speakers. You can hear uh, the sound from the front, but it's really, really weak. And these ones, if you crank it and you use a headset or passive speakers, they start to distort heavily. So there's something fundamentally wrong with the card because it's supposed to sound good, not uh, not like a. It sounds almost like a poorly tuned analog radio. So I have mapped out the card a little bit. So we have some components down here, some passive ones I think. We've got six of these two by three legged uh, ICs. I don't know exactly what they are, but uh, they're there. And a lot of passive resistors and capacitors. What I found out is that every jack of these three ones here has two of these two by three leg. So these six, uh, these six ICs or passive components, whatever they are, are connected to these X here. These three ones here, those two do not share those. They go to these relays over here. So that's a difference. And also these caps you can quite clearly see a row of three rows of four and that goes to these bottom X here. So we've got the rear, we had, uh, I think, uh, Subwoofer in center and uh, size speakers since this is 7.1 and that's the front. So the thing is here, this is the front jack. So you got the standard front uh, HD audio jack so you can connect your front panel on your case here. So all of this is uh, connected with these uh, relays. You can switch uh, where, where your source is. Like if you have your mic line in over here or over here. And you do that in the Asus tool in Windows or Line you just do it from the Ulsa uh, control panel like any sound card and you will hear, hear these relays go click click. Uh, I've done some tracing because uh, if we flip this over you can see here in the back we've got uh, three eight-legged uh, ICs here, two by four each. And these are uh, have a modern number 5532 so these are apparently operational amplifier Fires, so op amps, so they can uh, take I think four inputs. They they basically dual dual inputs, so they take two inputs and one, it gives one output on either side. It seems, 
So if we look at the PDF, the specifications, we're getting, uh, we're supposed to have plus or minus 3 to 20 volts. And we can also see here that we have basically two inputs and one output per side. So they, I think the way they work then they can handle basically one for each stereo channel here, each jack. So we have a dot uh, over there. And with that dot we should have a leg number four down here. And that should be a negative voltage. And there we have leg number eight in uh, top right corner here. And that should be a positive voltage it says here in the PDF. Now I don't know what voltage we should have on these here on this particular card. But uh, on the negative one uh, the range is negative 3 to negative 20. And the positive one is plus 3 to plus 20. So we can also see here that they have another two over here. I suspect those are for the front jack and the line in. There are some extra chips here, I haven't checked those out yet, but they are interconnected. Measured these components here because I figure if uh, the, the, the front is broken, and one is front here and one is the line, and since they have the same components it seems, they should be different if one is broken, and I can't measure any kind of difference in the systems or anything. They, they seem this identical. Now it could be that uh, this one might be for that, I'm not sure. But I have one in front here also on the side and I have traced it directly to the pin for the mic there. So this seems to be for the mic so that might could be line in. So that could be line in to here also and the relay selects that. And then maybe this one is for uh, over here because this is aux in so it should be analog and over here it's just digital so they they shouldn't need an op amp what i can tell so essentially that's what i know about the card right now i figured that these uh, op amps should have a common uh, negative voltage and positive voltage uh, as i guess at least so you can check so one of them should be this pin so you can go over that I just need better probes, these are so bad. And then we can check the uh, other pin here. That should be the positive. Yeah, so that seems to be all connected and we could obviously do resistance, but uh, since I was in diode mode now, but this seems to go down to basically nothing. So what I think here is because the topology or whatever you want to call it is slightly different. These jacks have different, slightly different components and so on. And the line in and the front out is slightly different. I think that's why this one doesn't have any audio out almost and these have. So what I want to do right now. So I want to check the voltages here on the different caps because we've got an uh, inductor over here, some diodes, some caps, big caps here, 25 volts. So I want to measure like power rails, make sure we have power. So let's put the car in a motherboard and see if we can get uh, some measurements on the voltage rails. Before we start uh, measuring any voltages here, I connected the speakers and you should be able to hear it. There's a lot of background noise uh, from the, all the channels. So we have some uh, music going here. So this is, uh, that was one of the three jacks that works. And that's the front jack and there's almost nothing on that. But yeah, as you can hear, there's a lot of background noise and it's not supposed to be there either, so that's also not a problem. Anyways, let's disconnect that and do some voltage measuring here. So let's check this op amp here because it's convenient for me that it's uh, facing this way here. So if I recall, uh, the top left pin should be one voltage and the bottom right should be the opposite. So let's measure one here. I can do that. 0 0.21, 210 millivolts. Okay. 
um, this one then minus oops. this one is minus 7.91 so the positive one is 200 millivolts that seems very low while the negative one was there and it's close to minus 8 okay let's measure some other voltages here so we check down here 12 some big caps that's something else it's probably for the that's for the audio filtering Five, almost 4.8 4 4.3 a little bit odd one but uh, take it so we can measure this coil here nothing nothing it's below, there's a cap below. Let's see if I can get to it. Another 12 volt rail. Makes sense. Do we have up here also big caps? 12. 0.21 again. That's interesting. So this is possibly a regulator here. Check that one. 12, middle, nothing, probably ground. I can check that later. This one then, 0 0.21 again. So yeah. Uh, so here is 0 0.21. There's a diode over here. I think this is like a switched circuit for a negative one, I suspect. Uh, yeah, minus 792. So there's a negative voltage. It's probably generated here. Probably diode, di diode and coil, and I guess uh, obviously input cap there. I'm guessing this is like for switching. So this is generating the negative voltage. Positive should be there. Yeah, zero. 0.21 again, and this one is negative 7.92. So yeah, that makes sense. So to suspect is that this part down here is for the negative voltage to the op amps, also on the other side. We know they're connected. And this is the positive one. And it's 200 millivolts seems way too low. I guess they should probably be the same. So I need to check what this here is. We're gonna probe the card a little bit more, but I have checked this component out here. It says 7808 on it, and a uh, quick googling tells me that it's a linear regulator, and it has a fixed voltage, so the last uh, digit 8 is the output vo voltage, so this is a positive voltage regulator that's supposed to put out 8 volts. So you essentially have uh, input on the top here, ground in the middle, and output at the bottom. So I think it needed at least 10.5 volts in. So we got 12 volts in, we measure that. And it should give eight out. Now, is it broken or something else pulling it down? But it seems as this one isn't outputting anything and I can't see that it's any short of ground. Can obviously check there is that one. We can measure ground on that one. Let's see here, is that the right one? Yeah. And yeah, out of line because uh, these things aren't grounded as is to have negative voltage and positive voltage. Uh, not not a neutral so to speak. But it uh, doesn't seem to be any sort of ground or anything. So I figured we could uh, actually inject some voltage. Because I have my lab power supply so we could put uh, 8 uh, volts positive into that leg there. And if this is the thing that is broken, I want to think that's broken, I guess it should work because then these should get 8 plus volts and negative 8 volts. Uh, all of them, including on the back side. 
So yeah, let's solder the wire and do something that could blow everything up. So I don't recommend do doing that, uh, injecting voltage. But uh, sometimes it's useful. I think this is a case where you can actually do that. So with that wire, I should be able to send 8 volts and I can also control the current uh, with my power supply. So I booted up the machine, but the power supply isn't uh, putting out any voltage yet. It's on, but output is disabled. So I set it to 8 volts uh, because, well, that's what the L LM7808 should give out. And uh, I set it to a half an amp or 500 milliamps. And that's just uh, overcurrent protection, so if we exceed that, it uh, will stop uh, outputting any voltage and hopefully limit any damage. So I have Winamp up here in Windows with a sample song. Uh, we can see the cable here. The red one here for our oh, 8 volt, and then we got the ground one here. Going over to the card there. So, and I have a couple of head, uh, headsets over here too. And speakers. The headset is to load up the output because if I just run the active speakers, the, the distortion is uh, a lot less. Let's just put that away. So we're gonna. So I got a splitter, essentially, on the output. So we can start this song here. Uh, Windows 95. Let's go forward a bit. So let's put on the uh, power supply here, the voltage. Let's turn it off again. Yeah, it's distorting. And when we turn it off, the the right channel goes out, there's no sound, that's why the level goes up if it turned on. This was a uh, tank. Yep, so this was uh, one of the three channels that works somewhat better. So I connected to the front one now and I'm gonna turn off the output and see if we can play this song here. Forward a bit. So the song is playing, and this is the front channel. There is sound, but uh, you can't hear it, it's too low. No, I can't even hear it. So let's put on the power supply here again and see what's happening with the front channel. I'll turn the volume down a bit, but we can see we're pulling 50 milliamps. And uh, the, the sound level has nothing to do with it apparently, so it seems as that's what we're gonna pull. So that uh, 7808 wasn't really loaded that hard. If it was rated 100 milliamp, it's still half of that. And if it was rated at 500, we're at 10% of capacity. So yeah, it seems like that thing is broken. The 7808 uh, linear regulator. So I have to buy one of those and put on there. So that's the next thing to do, I guess. We can see the broken 7808 here. I'm gonna remove it. Now um, I'm under a microscope obviously. There's a cap up here and one here. I have bought new caps so that's not an issue. But I figured I uh, could try removing this with iron. It's per perfectly doable uh, depending on your iron though. If your iron is uh, have the power. I have a 70 watt iron with a 4.8 millimeter tip so 
the, the power output is in everything because if you don't have a surface area to actually transfer the heat it, it won't help if you have 80 90 100 watt but 70 i have moved these packages around before they're called d pack i think uh, i have moved them around and the heat can actually transfer through the legs so they disorder too but i figure we remove this cable and then we actually cut these legs to make it a little bit easier so we don't have to deal with these Like the big tip, but uh, so that's just remove. This is probably not the ideal, perfect way to do it, but. Uh, So I haven't preheated the board or anything. I'm a little bit stuck. My, my, it's because my calipers are. It's because I cut the wrong thing. So with this thing once, so you can see a little bit of dent there. So it doesn't cut perfectly the way through. But anyway, if you have a brand new unabused one, it should work fine. So we got that way like that. Now we should be able to take the legs, no problems. So like normally, I would probably use hot air now since I proficient enough to do that and I have new caps and they are not very expensive but I figure most people have an iron to begin with and not uh, hot air stations so that's why I did it this way and not everyone wants to buy new caps and put them on either especially if they're not used to SMD caps so this is just one way you could do it. You have to be a little bit careful, still not ripping the pads when you're cutting. Anyways, we got it off and I'm just going to add a lot of solder here because this is probably, since it's 2008 or newer, it's that era when they swapped to lead free. Let's see, here's a new one. So this should drop straight in. Let's see if we're gonna do this. Put on some flux here, maybe. I think I wanna add some leaded solder here to the surface here. Like I think the correct way is to actually put it down and add solder from the side, like from uh, here, while you're heating it, so let the cap capillary effect do the rest. But uh, let's see here. 
you do it like this and push it down, I think it's uh, gonna have some squeeze out, but that's fine. You can remove that. Should you call it more professional way? Is that you won't have solder on that uh, lip sticking out there? But, uh, well, I care more about function now than, uh, than uh, aesthetics. I think I should have done it, but we have to double check here. It's a bit annoying with this, uh, these caps on the side here. But the legs are touching the pad, so I can't get any further down there. So anyways, I've turned the whole thing around so we can solder from the right here. Much easier for me. And some flux. So, should be the legs. Uh, this way I didn't have to replace the caps and uh, I figure most people just want to replace this component if they have a sound problem with this problem. I checked on my sound loss the X, X5, I got one of those from somewhere a while ago. And they have a 5 volt version of this. They also use like uh, op amps in similar fashion I guess. So yeah, I looked at an uh, optical like CD-ROM drive that I had a PCB out from and also I used these. So I think a lot of audio circuits, analog ones, you're going to find these in different sizes and models, voltages and stuff. But yeah, this could explain a lot of bad sound quality, broken sound channels and stuff like that. Assuming we did everything right now, this should work, this card. So let's try it out, measure the voltages and uh, play some music, I guess. I have power on the system, so we're live here. So we should have around 8 volts over here now. Yeah, 8.9 and uh, negative 1 should still be there. Yeah, so they are matching and working. So let's try to play something. So let's play a song here. So it seems to be working as fine. I'm gonna play some uh, audio capture so you get some better sound quality than trying to record a couple of crappy speakers. But yeah, it is working. The card has been repaired. I don't think it's any other faults on it right now, but uh, well, time will tell, I guess. Uh, the fault was fairly simple, a linear voltage regulator. So if you're better than me, you probably know those portion numbers and we'll check that. I didn't know that initially and I actually figured something was wrong with the op amps that I figured out these were, the 5532s. And because of the... I got audio out of these and with active speakers they sound fine-ish. But with the headphones they really sound bad too. So that took me for a loop in the beginning. But uh, yeah, the common culprit was this uh, 8 volt uh, voltage regulator. So once that was replaced, uh, the card works just fine. So yeah, I'm gonna go back into its old uh, system, an X79 system with uh, an 8-core CPU. 
runs Linux. This is an excellent card under Linux, or at least it was. Uh, I don't know how it stands up these days in terms of compatibility. I do know, so I've tested it, that uh, even Linux Mint uh, 22, the kernel still has support in 6.8. So yeah, I'm gonna see if it works fine in Linux still, otherwise I guess it has to be used in Windows. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day.